Welcome to Meet the Leader program. And today we are extremely honored to be invited in Namibia. And we are going to talk to former president of Namibia, His Excellency Dr. Sam Nuyoma. Dr. Sam Nuyoma, thank you very much for inviting us to Namibia. You are welcome. To start with Your Excellency, there is a belief among scholars that uh, family backgrounds do influence uh, leadership aspirations as well as skills. You grew up in uh, Ovambaland and uh, to what extent will you say your background and childhood experiences uh, influences uh, your leadership aspirations and skills? Well, yes, I was born uh, in northern Namibia in the Obsati region of the Republic of Namibia now. And I uh, grown up there uh, as a young boy. My first task was to look after my, my family's uh, cattle uh, plus goat and sheep. That was my task and responsibility to look after them and they go to the cattle post uh, in order to ensure that our, our cattle are in, in good condition. So for to, to be able to produce milk and the butter which we produce from the milk. So that was my, my first responsibility uh, as a firstborn in the family. And I also helped my mother uh, to, to pound uh, millet, which we call mahangu, to produce flour for for our 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 dish which we normally consume at home we never buy things from the shop in fact there were no shops there <laughs> even up to now if you go there and you go to to walk kilometers and kilometers to find a a place where you can purchase some uh, some goods from the shops so uh, and i was brought up that way even at the school of those days, I never considered school to be something important because all other boys, they are looking after their cattle and uh, you had to go to cattle post sometimes 50 kilometers from home in order to ensure that your, your cattle are, are in good condition. So this is how I was brought up. But uh, that means also responsibility and accountability because if you are a uh, 20 or 30 or 50 kilometers away from home. Those days, leopards, they are there to grab the goats or sheep, and the lions are there also to, to grab your cattle. So you have to arm yourself, you have to have a, a knob kill, you have to have a bows and arrows uh, ready to, 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 to attack this animal and kill them, to prevent them from uh, uh, harassing your the cattle were looking after. So this is how we were brought up those days. And uh, Your Excellency, you spent about 30 years out of Namibia championing for Namibia cause for independence. Whilst you were away, what shaped uh, your thinking and to what extent that helped you when eventually you came back to Namibia as a president? Well, we were first of all uh, inspired politically by the achievement of independence of Ghana under the leadership of uh, Dr. Kwame Krumah in 1957. So, and then, more so, by the, the process of the achievement of independence of Tanganyika then, uh, before it became the United Republic of Tanzania. So when uh, the Tanu, under the leadership of Mwalimu Kenyerere, uh, mobilized the, the masses of the people of Tanzania politically. And, uh, and the British colonial administration there was forced to accept the demand of, of the people of Tanganyika under the leadership of, of, of Mwalimu Nyerere. So that is more closer to us. Now we used to look on the map uh, of Africa, oh, uh, 
Ghana Chief Independence Center. It's so long distance. From here, you pass through Angola under Portuguese colonialism, uh, Congo DRC uh, under the uh, Belgian colonialism, Congo Brazzaville under the French. Uh, so you go on passing, uh, it's not possible to reach Ghana in other ways. Mm. But here, uh, I was able to escape from the country when I was being arrested here. When we started also to, to demand our, our freedom and independence, because we are inspired by Tanzania being uh, also a former German colony and they became a League of Nations mandate. This were German colonies then, Germany, in Southwest Africa, uh, Germany, East Africa, Tanganyika, Rwanda, Burundi, and the West Africa was in Cameroon and Togo. Right? So we also started to demand now after the British agreed to that the Tanganyika should proceed to to independence, uh, which it was achieved in 1961. So we started also to that Namibia should be placed under the UN trusteeship system. But uh, the, uh, the apartheid regime of South Africa here, led by Ferevuru to Foster and the Malanda, they refused. They said, no, 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 there's no question that uh, Namibia should be placed under the UN trusteeship system. So uh, we started uh, to demand our independence. So I escaped from the country through the British the British Botswana land, through British uh, Central Africa, that, that is now the Southern Odessia, Northern Odessia, and then reached Tanganyika in 1960. So I escaped from here. But uh, all those were under the British colonial. So when I escaped here, I was helped by the people. Uh, of, of Botswana land, of Southern Odessia, or Northern Odessia, but even in that, by that time, <laughs> there was no question of uh, being to go so easily into British colonies. So I was helped by the, by the freedom fighters, Kaunda, Northern Odessia, and escaped into Tanganyika. Then I was helped by Marimu, who was the leader of Tanu. In fact, they, when I arrived there in March 1960, Mwarimu just uh, came back from, from the UN where the United Nations then decided that uh, Tanganyika should proceed to, to independence in 1961. So it was not easy, mm -hmm. but uh, I learned a lot from, uh, from Mwarimu, from uh, from uh, Kwame Nkrumah, from Gamal Abdul Nas, these are the leaders who shape up our Pan African idea of uh, Africa for Africans. And Africa must be ruled by the Africans. This, this is what we uh, shape at us in those difficult days. Your Excellency, completing a long time dream of uh, attaining uh, Namibian independence. In uh, year 1990, uh, March 21st, you became the first uh, president uh, of independent uh, Namibia. At that time, uh, when you assumed the, the mantle of the presidency, what was your vision of this uh, great national? And uh, how did you want to fulfill that vision? You know, we fought a war here, mm. a racial war, mm. which was uh, imposed on us by the South African minority white settlers of, uh, of Foster, uh, the voters. Mm. So we have to reconcile our nation. Uh, that all, what we have adopted, the policy of national reconciliation, mm. that all those who remain within the borders of the Republic of Namibia from the 21st of March 1990 are citizens of the Republic of Namibia and therefore they should be protected by the laws of the Republic of Namibia. 
So uh, we have uh, to, to make sure that if we have to develop our country economically, we have to have a peace and stability in the country. And this is the policy we have pursued. But uh, it was not easy because we did not have uh, a, a university or a polytech or any other technical schools. We had to inherit uh, uh, band, band education, as they were called it here, inferior education. That is, band education means that uh, African children would not be taught mathematics and science. So we have to demolish that, we have to do away with that and establish national schools where all the children, irrespective of their color or race, are going to the same school. And then we establish the University of Namibia, Polytechnic of Namibia, and the other technical institutions. So we are able to, now we are training our own engineers, uh, geologists, doctors, so we have now the School of Medicine here, uh, School of Pharmacy, and uh, so we were going ahead during this short time of uh, 22 years of independence. Thank you, Your Excellency. At, at that time when you assumed the president, were, were there some adjustments that you had to make in order to realize this goal? No, we have to establish uh, Really, is people's government, uh, the, the the national assembly uh, that makes the laws of the country, and uh, also to make sure that the, the resources of the country are utilized for the benefit of all Namibians, irrespective of their color or race or places of origin. Uh, do you think there are particularly uh, qualities that uh, perhaps African leaders must have in contrast with? Uh, leaders from developed countries? Well, I think it's to maintain our culture. Mm -hmm. I was developed, I was born uh, in a rural area, and uh, we were learn, we were taught by our parents that we must be proud of what we are. So, and I think we must maintain our culture. We should not inherit foreign cultures. Development is something else because you, you develop a car in order to move fast. You develop a train in order to, to carry more goods to any destination you wanted to, or to trade with the other countries. How do you see the future for Africa and how can we reinforce it? Africa must unite. Without Africa united under the, the UN flag, here in Namibia we are trying to to make sure that our children understand it. That's why here in Namibia we have an African Union flag and uh, we also think, including uh, uh, African Union anthem at all our school. So the aim is to register in the minds of our children that one day our national flag will go into the museum and the African Union flag will remain the, the, the only flag on the African continent. So it's the anthem. We are already, our children are already singing the African Union anthem. That's the idea behind it. Your, Your Excellency, do you see uh, regime change as a challenge in Africa and what can be done about it? Regime change is an insult to the intelligence of the African leaders. African leaders are capable of leading their people as they led their people before colonialism and imperialism occupied this country. Dear viewers, thank you very much for following up this uh, very informative uh, insight from His Excellency Dr. Sam Nyoma. I'm sure you have benefited a lot from this interview. Your Excellency, thank you very much for according us yeah, your time. Sun, sun, thank you very much.